in this episode we're going to be looking at this pep science quiz read the following statements environmental degradation is a reality one read each explanation and circle a or b to indicate whether it supports or does not support this statement here we have a table so we have you know columns that go vertically and rows that go horizontally all right let's go with this it says impact on the environment support not support harm the natural environment so that would definitely support environmental degradation um, improve the ecosystem that does not support wildlife becomes extinct so, for example, if we cut down trees, then wildlife could go extinct because we have habitat that is being removed. All right. Um, water becomes safe for drinking. That would not support. Number two, what word is used to describe the amount of natural resources that we use that eventually harm the environment? A, environmental degradation. B, environmental footprint ecosystem coexistence and this the environmental footprint is what we would use to describe that so for example uh, factories have a larger environmental footprint than uh, farmers small farmers so it's basically saying which of these two groups would contribute more to environmental problems and the size of your footprint would indicate the contribution you make in a negative way list three ways of conserving the environment and justify your reasons so we could reduce we could reuse we could recycle we could innovate we could educate so let's go with those now reduce we could carpool for example to save on the amount of cars that are on the road polluting the environment so that's one way we could reduce so instead of wasting water i could fix leaky pipes that's reducing um, wastage so we won't have the excess demand right unlimited resources then we could recycle for example bottles we can recycle bottles uh, we can recycle paper we could innovate find new energy sources or new ways of using energy and we could most importantly educate everyone as to the impact that we can have on the environment if we do these positive things number four list four types of environments so we have uh, desert environments we have rainforest environments um, tiger and tundra um, wetlands those are the things that come to mind easily okay here's one it says name three types of vegetation that thrive in the tiger and i would use lichen moss and uh, coniferous trees okay or evergreen trees let's see when we get to the answers table two shows the texture and feel of different types of soil so again we have another table here we have soil texture and feel we have sand and they are saying here that sand is grainy and powdery silt is silky and powdery loam is smooth gritty and feels sticky when wet and wet clay is grainy and um, gummy no six says name the incorrect texture or feel on the table and write the correct texture or feel so just looking at this table i would want to focus on wet clay wet clay they say it's grainy and gummy but i i know that it should be smooth and it should be sticky when wet okay all right, so it says here um, three types of soils were wet with the same amount of water and each soil type was then squeezed into the shape of a sausage and then bent. Number seven says 
with soil bent without crumbling and justify your answer and that to me would be um clay because clay like play-doh you know how we could take play-doh and we could shape it and bend it right make circles and different shapes with it so we could say that the clay is very plastic in nature all right during the heavy showers of rain that lasted four days many hectares of farmer allen's farm were flooded farmer allen exclaimed too much of that soil is on my land now question eight says to which type of soil was farmer allen referring and we have sand clay loam and silt and it says justify your line of reasoning and i would go with clay why because clay particles are fine and they are closely packed together and it does not allow for water to pass through easily in class we had said that clay has a high water holding capacity sand is on the other extreme where the particles are large and there are lots of spaces between them and therefore it allows water to pass through easily loam is kind of in the middle where it has the best of both in that it can drain well but also retains water for the roots of plants okay so this question is about soil structure all right so let's go with nine name four causes of climate change uh, let's go with these if earth's orbit changes so that we get closer to the sun then we can have climate change the tilt of the earth on its axis is another reason some scientists are measuring now that earth is tilted more on its axis than before which means that the earth during the summer is tilted more towards the sun so the summer is going to get warmer and in the winter it is tilted farther away from the sun so the winters are going to be colder so that's another explanation then we have increases in greenhouse gases and for example destruction of forests and so on that would cause now more carbon dioxide to stay in the atmosphere than before all right so list two effects of climate change we can have global warming we have um, rising sea levels we have droughts more severe weather um, conditions such as hurricanes and storms and tornadoes and things like that name three luminous organisms so the firefly comes to mind pinewally then we have glow worms and we have certain species of shrimp krill and jellyfish that are also luminous number 12 explain what happens when you look at an object through a straw now i'm going to assume they don't have a diagram here but i'm going to assume that the straw is not blocked by anything and that the straw is not bent in any way right so light will pass through light will be blocked there will be no changes the light will change the direction so i will say a light will pass through now here and i would have preferred if they had a, a diagram like they have for 13. so for 13 you have this diagram and we have a light source here which is a torch and we have um these these cards here with holes in them and they are all aligned and we can see an eye here number 13 says what is likely to happen if one of the cards is shifted a light will pass through b light will be blocked there will be no change the light will change direction and i will go with b the light will be blocked because here these are opaque so if i pull this then the holes are no longer aligned and light will be blocked by the opaque object number 14 each statement in the table was suggested as an example of translucent material from each statement indicate by shading whether you agree or disagree and justify your answer so here we have brown paper bag wax paper um, cello tape um, frosted glass now brown paper bag translucent hmm 
if it is greasy. Okay. Wax paper, that's translucent. Cello tape, no, that's not trans translucent. Um, that's transparent. And frosted glass, yes, that would be transparent. Let's go with 15. A wooden ruler is described as opaque, transparent, translucent, or transmitter. And I would go with opaque. Wooden ruler, not a clear plastic ruler, but a wooden ruler would be opaque. So let's go to the answers now and see if what we have lines up with the answers. Let's go to page 26. It says here for science, for number one, it's A, B, A, B. Let's go. So A supported, B not supported, A supported, yes, while life would become extinct, and B. Yes, so we got those. Number two, let's look at two, B. Let's go back to the question two, B, environmental footprint. Yes, we got that. Number three, list three ways of conserving the environment. Let's go with three. Okay, composting, yes, recharging batteries, planting trees. What's composting? The natural manure does not have any chemicals to harm the environment. So composting would be like you now taking leaves and paper and allowing those to decompose over time. So it creates natural manure. Rechargeable batteries have fewer chemicals that enter the environment all right so if i use a lot of batteries say in a flashlight or radio or something like that then if i have rechargeable batteries it would allow me to save on the number of batteries that enter the landfill because i'll throw them out in my garbage and the garbage would take the garbage truck would take them to the landfill um so i would save on on that planting trees so um, this would provide habitats for wildlife and medicinal properties. But not only that, um, it could remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as well. So the more trees we have, the more carbon dioxide would be pulled from the atmosphere. Number four, these four types of environments. Let's look at what they have. They have wetlands, ice sheets, tundra, and desert. All right, it says here, name three types of vegetation that thrive in the taiga. Um, let's see what they, they have like in yes, mosses and evergreen trees. Good. Number, number six, this was the one with the texture of the soil. Let's look at what they say for that one. They say that sand is powdery when it should be gritty. True and wet clay is grainy when it should be sticky that's also um, correct let's go with number seven um, what type of soil bends without crumbling and we had said clay let's go clay and they say clay is plastic that is it is easily bent when wet number eight they have b let's go back to this and see what b is um, what type of soil farmer Allen is referring to? B clay. Yes, so we had that. And they say here, um, sand and loam particles are not as fine as clay. Therefore, the pore spaces are not as small as clay. And we can conclude that water is able to flow moderately through loam and quickly through sand. On the other hand, the particles of clay are very fine with small pore spaces. These are closely packed and therefore prevent water from flowing quickly or moderately through clay. Clay has a high water holding capacity. Okay, great. Let's go. Let's go with name four causes of climate change. Let's see here. They have methane, ice sheets, aerosols, and chlorofluorocarbons. Okay, methane, the gas that is passed by cows. All right, so ice sheets behave like mirrors and cool the earth. If the ice sheets are melted, then the earth will become warmer. So what happens where we have large um, sheets of ice and glaciers and all of that? 
it acts like a mirror and bounces some of the light back out into space so it kind of helps to cool the earth but if this melts then all of the rays of the sun will now directly hit the earth and warm the earth okay let's go with aerosols tiny dust particles and droplets so if we we add more aerosols we are adding more um, dust particles in the air we and these absorb and they scatter the sunlight resulting in climate change cfc's chlorofluorocarbons um, rise into the atmosphere as greenhouse gases so let's give an example of this now so air conditioners um, and refrigerators use um, gases in them and some of these gases are chlorofluorocarbons that cause the greenhouse effect number 10 let's go back to 10 um, list two effects of climate change let's go with this um, changing seasons fewer crops reaching maturity rising sea levels dry seasons last longer shrinking ice unusual increase in rainfall and more flooding let's go to 11 name three luminous organisms let's see what they have the object is seen because the light from the object bounces to the eye okay so they are not describing the luminous organisms they are telling us how we see they are describing the process by which we see things so in order for me to see an object light has to bounce from that object and then be directed to my eyes we have the firefly the glow worm we have like jellyfish that are also luminous and other microorganisms such as those found in the waters in the luminous lagoon in Trelawney. Number 12, um, explain what's happening here when we look through the straw. Um, yes, um, light will pass through. Yes. Number 13, what will happen if one of the cards is shifted? Card shifted. And they have okay this can't be for number 13 this would be for 14 we know that the light will be blocked right but they have a a b a so this is 14 so let's look at 14 um here a a b a okay all right so these line up with what we had said translucent objects allow some light to pass through and block out others they do not allow light to form shapes um, the other side of translucent objects appear fuzzy and unclear so this whole question at number 14 has to do with how light behaves when it comes in contact with certain materials if it's opaque light does not pass through if it's translucent it allows light to pass through but scatters the light if it is transparent all the light passes through and a clear image can be seen on the other side number 15 we have here the wooden ruler is opaque all right so what did we achieve in this episode we looked at this pep science quiz and these topics were from first term very important that we keep them fresh in our mind right through the year so we were looking at the environment types of environment we looked at soils soil texture soil structure we looked at different types of organisms in the ecosystem some of the features of these organisms we looked at how light behaves when it comes into contact with certain materials all right take the time to review this as much as is possible to keep these concepts fresh in your mind all right take care i'll see you in the next episode